We're back with part two of our epic trip to Hiva Oa in northern Tahiti. In this episode, we encounter some incredible diving and get amongst some really nice fish. You feel like you could just be snapper snooping these points in the gutways, nice and flat. Visibility is quite green, very similar to New Zealand. What's the water temperature, Jackson? But it's 27 degrees, so it's much better. <laughs> I couldn't get over the scenery of this place. This particular island we went to had amazing, amazing coastline. Some of it looking really, really similar to New Zealand. And then of course you'd come across a beautiful white sandy beach like this with heaps of coconut trees. We're at Tahuata today off Hibaola. Uh, this is one of the reserve areas. It's absolutely stunning, amazing landscape. It's actually quite similar to New Zealand, especially the coastline, right on the edge. You get that sort of growth just above the water. But the difference is it's inky blue water, and we get manta rays swimming around us already, and there's chances of wahoo, and there's so, so many fish. Incredible, incredible place. We jump in the water because it's 27 degrees, and Chuck, they went too long. And you'll see the amazing landscape hey, here. Do a flip! <laughs> A great feeling being able to chuck your wetsuit on in nice, clear, warm water. And as you can see, it's flat, flat calm along this coast. Apparently this is a good spot. He catches lots of big wahoo along here, but we're just scouting, so I just have a little duck for protection, but might be able to film something if we see it. It's quite nice, eh? Probably 20 meters, 25, isn't it? Pretty good. Although very tame looking above the surface, as soon as you pop your head down, there was beautiful vertical walls working their way down to 20, 30 meters with lots of different interesting species to see and shoot. First fish I see is a nice big job fish. Working our way out towards a point just along this flat, beautiful bit of coastline, it's just incredible what we'd see. Big schools of big rainbow runner, big trevally, big job fish, loads of sharks. You wouldn't expect that looking at the coastline. All these whalers knew what divers were, and it was a little uneasy with them coming up to check us out. As we discussed in the previous episode, the visibility wasn't always amazing. Although this is really nice visibility for New Zealand, it's not necessarily what you'd expect out in a tropical island. Absolutely magic spot here, lots of fish, big rainbow runner, big school of big ice from valley, a few different types of surgeons, uh, big parrotfish, and I'm sure there's good stuff down there, you see those sharks, they're not like our New Zealand sharks, these ones get quite feisty if you start shooting stuff, and especially those type of whalers had really bad experiences with those trying to bite you, and the deeper you go, the more bold they tend to get. So I've got to be honest, you get a little bit nervous in this situ sort of situation. I've got a little 60 centimetre gun to protect me. <laughs> but great a beautiful thing, spot. Great thing, Jackson. 50% chance they'll get you. <laughs> At least I've got the gun. You've got the <laughs> You see above the water in the background when I'm talking 
how calm and beautiful the coastline looks. It looks like you'd just be snapper snooping. But down on the drop off, it's absolutely alive with beautiful bait fish amongst some nice big predators. Beautiful, isn't it? I just can't stop looking at it. <laughs> you wouldn't mind if this was our backyard, would we? Oh, <laughs> it wasn't all deep diving. You'd find some really nice species right up in shallow. Like this big parrotfish. We'd find mullet. We'd find different trevally and all sorts right up in the waves. This is key for us scouting for the competition as these species are on the list and worth just as many points as shooting a big pelagic fish. This is Moite's island. He lived on this island here so he knew the coastline amazingly well as we could see with him driving so close to the coast. We'd done a fair bit of scouting and it was time to go get some spearing in. And he told us this point out here was the way to go. Although the visibility was down here, there were so, so many fish. It was exciting and eerie at the same time. You never know what was gonna come out of the Merc. All these fish swimming in front of me, there's multiple different species of surgeon, trevally, they're all good eating. Bait balls coming racing past. This is a brown unicorn, which we weren't seeing so, so common here and often are really sought after in French Polynesia. Like the other surgeon fish, they have very leathery skin. I just rode. Oh man! Oh man!
<laughs> it was quite constant, and these big Benito would come whizzing over the top of us. There was so much going on, it was difficult to soak it up. And a very common sight here were manta rays coming in on you on the bottom or with you on the surface. The whole of Hiva'oa and the surrounding islands seemed to be a highway for manta ray. One of the really cool fish you'd see here, and you do see them in many tropical islands, are milkfish. These things are like giant mullet on steroids. I was trying to encourage Storm to shoot one, as I know they go really, really hard with those big tails. Normally a very flighty fish. In this place, very, very stupid. Normally you would not be able to chase them like this. With those big fork tails, they can accelerate really quickly as they're towing Storm through the water here with ease. With all this commotion and this wounded fish, it's worth putting a second shot in just to secure the fish quickly. Common to see big jobfish on nearly every dive. And it's not always manta ray coming in on you. These big whalers were very, very friendly and would come in all the time. I was diving this nice platform in about 22, 23 metres. It wasn't very deep, but it would drop off and you'd have constant schools of fish coming past. As you can see, it was a likely spot to get some nice fish. A favourite of ours and a really safe one to eat are these big surgeons. Not a perfect shot and with this dirty water and there being lots of sharks, have to be really cautious. This spot was just a magic spot to dive. Like this, we'd have dog tooth tuna come in every so often, big schools of bluefin trevally, and all sorts of weird reef fish. You can see how fast the bait fish are moving around. There's just so much going on.
you see those cool long toms. They're almost translucent. You never get sick of the sight of a dog tooth tuna coming mm -hmm. in on you. But like the first episode, I wasn't so keen on damaging gear before the competition, and we didn't have a huge need to be shooting these bigger pelagic fish. I was quite keen to try and shoot one of these big bonito that kept whizzing past above me. But it was quite annoying. They wouldn't really come close to me on the bottom. They tended to stay up in mid-water and they weren't so inquisitive. They were good size and apparently they make great sashimi. Translator. Google Translate. Google Translate was a fantastic tool. We asked if he knew where the fad was because you need certain marks for them. And he said he knew exactly where one was close to the island. While everyone else was relaxing and taking their gear off, I knew that I wanted to be in my gear ready to go as soon as we hit the fad. Because of course in this situation, he spotted the school of Mahi Mahi with his glasses as soon as we turned up to the fad and I was straight over, geared up, ready to go. I shot the ball Mahi Mahi right in front of the school. Mahi Mahi are one of my favourite fish to eat. You can have them sashimi cooked any way, they're fantastic. Didn't take long and the others were in on the action, as you'll see here, storm photo bombing. Luckily our manager Graham was selfless enough to stay in the water and film the whole time as everyone managed to shoot one. Unfortunately for the Mahi Mahi, they weren't that smart and they hung around for quite a while. It was an incredible way to top off the day. We stopped in at Moite's place just to drop off a couple of mahi-mahi for his family there before we headed back to Hivaoa. This place was absolute paradise. And of course, for the next few days, we ate like kings eating mahi-mahi every night. Certainly hard to beat.
if you're ever lucky enough to be up in the Marquesian Islands, Hiva O is certainly worth a look if you're really interested in your underwater scenery. Incredible numbers of fish, great diving, and really, really unique compared to a lot of other places we go to.